Hey guys, I am back. What do I mean by that? I mean, I just made a video about the Mavic Air 2's sensor and its HDR recording capability. I'm going to talk again about the sensor now. This is the second video in a two-part series about the Mavic Air 2's sensor. First one HDR, second one 48 megapixels. So HDR video, again, got to check it out. It's an awesome feature of this drone and this Sony sensor. What about the 48 megapixels? Is it 48? Is it not? Super weird. They say it's 12 effective megapixels slash 48 effective megapixels. What does that mean? Well, it's complicated. And at the end of the day, I think it's a little more 12 than 48. So let's take a look at what I mean. The backdrop of all this is this Sony IMX 586 sensor and they took every pixel and cut it into four pieces so what that means is when you're shooting in 12 megapixels it's almost like all those four together they're going to capture all that light it's going to behave like each pixel is 1.6 microns now in contrast when you shoot in 48 megapixels it's split in half so you're using only a 0.8 micron now that sounds like it's half but remember this is a square so it means it's getting one fourth the light and the results indicate that. DJI says, they're very upfront with it, they say only use this in ideal lighting. As you can see here in this backlit situation near sunset, not much in the foreground. It looks very dark as you compare it to the standard photo, let alone the HDR photo, which looks much, much nicer. So when are you gonna use this 48 megapixels? Not when it's dark. Not when there's extreme lighting of any kind. You're going to want a well-lit scene, and you're really going to want a good reason to have those extra pixels. Okay, so that's number one. It's darker. What about number two, which is, is there actually any extra resolution with these 48 megapixels? Now, there is. You will see some benefit, but it's small, and let me tell you why. Okay, so check out this table. So I got the Mavic 2 Pro on top. I got the Mavic Air 2 on the bottom in 12 megapixel and 48 megapixel uh, rows there. You can see the pixel size 2.4 on that 20 megapixel one inch sensor on the Mavic 2 Pro. And that really comes into play, that bigger pixel size. 1.6 when I'm shooting in 12 megapixel and 0.8 in 48 megapixel on the Mavic Air 2. Now, why does that matter? Well, there's some math and some science that goes into this, but if you look at the F number, which is fixed on our Mavic Air 2, 2.8, that means there's a spot size, if the optics are perfect, of about 3.7 micron. That means if there's a point out there in the distance and it's teeny tiny, it's going to end up, no matter what, spreading out over about 3.7 microns. So it really limits how well you can do uh, due to the diffraction in lenses. Unfortunately, that's just physics, that's Einstein stuff. Light is waves, light is particles, all that goofy stuff. So because of the wave nature of light, there's diffraction, we spread out, we got a 3.7 micron zone. So what the general rule of thumb is, is once you get uh, your sensor, your pixel size to be a half or a third of that, you really stop seeing any benefit in any algorithm being able to distinguish from one place to the next. I mean, what's the benefit of spreading 10 pixels over one spot? They're all going to look the same. So it's all driven by F number. As you can see with the Mavic 2 Pro, as the F number changes from 2.8 to 11, that spot size changes from 3.7 to 7.4 at uh, the default F number of 5.6, which is where you're gonna see in our later videos comparing the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, we default left it at the default value there. And all the way up to 14.5 uh, micron spot size. Uh, and this is assuming like a, I think 540 nanometer wavelength kind of in the middle of the band of uh, visible wavelengths. All right, so let's convert that to something more meaningful, which is in terms of pixels. So looking at the Mavic 2 Pro, uh, the spot size is one and a half times the size of the pixel. Okay, not too bad. At uh, f5.6, it's three times. Uh, and that's really about the limit of where you want to be. When we go at f11 on the Mavic 2 Pro, we start to see some blurriness show up. And I've seen it. It's definitely there. You're not going to get the sharpest image at f11. 
and that's because you're spreading that light from a single point in space out over six pixels. Okay, those pixel right next to each other is going to look the same as the one right next to it. Okay, so that's just physics of it. Now we go to the Mavic Air 2, we see a similar situation. I'm pretty good, kind of on the edge. I think I'm taking full advantage of 12 megapixels, and the pictures do look nice and sharp. I go to 48 megapixels, no dice really. At 4.6 times the pixel size that spot, uh, I'm really getting marginal gain with that extra pixel. But that's all just math. Let's take a look at the actual results. All right, so this was one of the first pictures I took with the Mavic Air 2. Just launched it out of the backyard, took a picture over the uh, horse, uh, horse farm there in the back, and you got that house there in the distance. That house pops up a lot in these videos. Uh, but it's very far away in this shot, and I really just crop in on it, and we're going to compare the 48 to the standard image. Now here they are side by side. Um, I've highlighted with some arrows because it's not super obvious the benefits, so I've really tried to point out and I'll go through them one by one. So first, let's look at the fence. Number one there at the top looks more like a fence on the right with the 48 megapixels. So it is gaining some benefit. A little splotchy on the left. As we move down to number two, I can see on the right that is a split window. There's a white line across the middle of it. And number three, the window does look a lot less blurry. It is a little sharper. Now, I have a red arrow in there too, number four, because I don't know what happened to that fence. You know, I don't know if something in the processing, the sharpness, uh, algorithm at the 48 megapixels, um, it seemed to lose something there. And these pictures were taken back to back, the same lighting, you see the same shadows, everything's the same. So I'm not quite sure where that fence went. You can barely make it out. Um, don't understand why that happened exactly. But in the end, you do see a little more detail in this shot on the right. All right, next image. We got the neighborhood barn here and the basketball courts. I picked this little house over on the left of the barn uh, as my target here to crop in on. This time, a 15x crop. So what do I see here? Uh, let's go to the green arrows first. Uh, number one, I can see the planks along the siding of the house much better. There's only a hint of that on the left. Uh, you could argue also on the roof there, you can see the stains a little bit more detail and the shingles. Um, red arrow number two, so it's a little more distracting. The pixelization effect, the choppiness, I mean, those are straight angled lines, um, but they're straight on that roof, and they just look super choppy. Uh, so something with the image processing algorithm at 48 megapixel, these angled lines are getting chopped up a little more harshly, and they're more obvious and annoying. Uh, moving on to number three, that looks more like an American license plate, which it is. On the left, looks like a wide, skinny uh, European license plate. So we're getting some extra detail in the vertical direction, really getting a better shape to that. I do see some more graininess in the black cars there, however. Uh, number four, finally, on the left, you can see the rungs they have in their banister in the front of that house in much more detail and um, actually a little bit better lighting on the deck but again a little grainier too so maybe they're going to fine tune some of the algorithms get rid of a little bit of the graininess maybe smooth out some of these angled lines for us maybe better interpolation algorithms or something at 48 megapixels uh, but overall you do get a little more detail but it's you know there's always some kind of trade-off at 48 megapixels overall Am I going to be shooting in 48 megapixels? No, I'm not. I mean, that's just it. I don't want the darker scenes. I don't need that really extra level of detail over 12 megapixels generally. I mean, maybe if there's some unique situation where I think I'm really going to want to crop something out or just have a ton of fine detail, maybe I'll take one just to back up, see, see which one comes out better. I'm much more likely to be using the HDR photo and video. Uh, and like I said before, you're going to want to check that video out. So uh, subscribe, check out our channel, go find that video. That one's worth seeing. The quad bear filter really playing its part for HDR video especially. Check us out at halfchrome.com. We've got a ton of great comparisons there. It's really hard at this point to parse out you know, why you might even want to buy the Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic 2 Zoom. So we put all our information together, huge tables, trying to parse it out, and we really have it broken down nicely for you there. And we're going to be putting that in video soon. 
The answer is yes. You may want to buy those drones, but the Mavic Air 2 is really looking like a great option for most people. So stick with us, guys. We're going to be back soon. Thanks for watching. Again, subscribe. Check us out at halfchrome.com. We'll see you next time.